Hi, this is Sadhguru Bhatia and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Jesse Nado, VP of Marketing at Dremio. And today you are announcing a AWS edition of Dremio. Tell us a bit about the edition itself. Yes, so we're very excited to release this, uh, this very tailored version of Dremio. Um, we're uh, taking advantage of a bunch of the capabilities that AWS provides to really give our customers um, a very service-like experience uh, in their own account, in their own VPC, and, and they get full control of it. So, uh, you know, what, we've, what we're introducing, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into this more, is, uh, is, is a lot of automation that takes advantage of, of the AWS infrastructure so that the deployment is fast and easy, uh, the configuration is automated, the, uh, the performance itself. Um, we scale up uh, with the capability we call Elastic Engines. We scale up and down automatically uh, to provide you know, maximum performance and cost savings so people aren't using infrastructure when they don't need it. Um, and fundamentally just you know, provide uh, uh, just a very um, service-like experience with software. And how different is the AWS edition from you know, the stock uh, edition of Dremio? Uh, because you know, we have software that people have frankly been able to deploy in AWS environments, right? Uh, but it's very much the same software that they would deploy in an Azure environment or you know, in other places as well. So with the AWS edition, and frankly, that's why we're calling it the AWS edition, um, you know, we, we've done a bunch of tailoring. And, uh, and where that really manifests itself is, is in three ways. So the first is in the actual uh, deploy and setup experience. So everything that we're doing now is through the AWS marketplace. And so this is where you know, people will go and sign up uh, and actually deploy uh, the software. And that experience is, has a ton of automation uh, built around it. So that's where, uh, for example, uh, all, all the configuration that somebody would have had to have done normally to, you know, on their own to uh, configure Dremio for the AWS environment, S3 storage, for example, uh, that stuff is all just, you know, taken care of and, and, and handled for people. Backups, for example, automatically configured. So there's, there's a bunch of just rich automation around the initial setup and deploy and configure process that now takes uh, Dremio users uh, less than 10 minutes to get up and running and querying, which is fantastic, right? So, I mean, you think about uh, a lot of SaaS offerings that are out there, uh, it takes a lot longer than 10 minutes to get up and running, right? Just because something SaaS doesn't mean it's, uh, it doesn't mean it's easy. So we've really built a ton of ease of use around that initial uh, you know, onboarding experience. So that's the first thing. Uh, then the second thing that we've done, we've done differently, is we've created a a, a ton of, of of optimization and automation around our query engines themselves, and in fact created multiple of them. So Dremio is now with this release, you know, today, uh, moving from a world of uh, of a single engine essentially supporting uh, multiple different workloads, query workloads, to as many engines as you want. And so with these, uh, you know, these elastic engines, uh, you can tailor each of them to the specific workload. So maybe you have some ad hoc workloads here, you've got some, um, you know, some BI or, or reporting workloads there. Uh, you can have as many as you like, and that way you can size them, you can tailor them uniquely to the, the demands of a particular workload. That means you never under-provision, you never over-provision, you're always creating the right amount of, of cloud infrastructure to support that load. And the separation, of those, those, work, those engines are, are uh, independent means that you don't have contention. So performance is maximized for, for every workload as well. Um, and then it gets even better. So like the fact that these engines now exist, they're independent, uh, we wrapped automation around them so that they start and stop on demand based on query uh, demand coming in from those different workloads. So you know, and, and, you know once again, they're originally sized and tailored as, uh, as needed to fit the workload. When we see you know, uh, query demand coming in, Dremio automatically spins those uh, those engines up, or the engine for that workload goes to the size that it, that it was configured for, runs until the you know the, the the demand for queries for that for that engine stops, and then we automatically elastically shrink it all the way back down to zero. And so this way, we are eliminating any uh, charges for idle compute. Uh, there's nothing running in the background. Um, we're really you know taking full advantage of, uh, the, of of the inherent elasticity, if you will, of the cloud. And so that was a big that was a big architectural change that we that we made. We're very very excited to get this out because um, uh, it's going to help people save a lot of money, right, uh, in terms of their of their cloud infrastructure. And then the, the last thing is something we call uh, parallel projects, which is basically a way of uh, of creating you know any independent um, uh, kind of workload environment or actually set of workload environments. Think business unit. 
So if I'm the marketing team or I'm like a, a totally separate business unit, uh, I can have my own projects, each with many engines, right? Could have an unlimited number of engines inside, but they're completely isolated and multi-tenant. So much easier compliance, uh, basically the ability to control um, control my entire you know, environment from, a, from a, a governance perspective as well. And those projects, again, because they're all self-contained, they have all the configuration, everything across the whole environment. Um, it's easier to sort of you know, start a project, stop a project, have multiple projects that you might want to be running and, and just kind of like give those to different teams or business units, like I say. Since Dremio can be, as you earlier mentioned, you know, it, it supports all of the platforms, how easy it is, you know, to move from one platform to other platform, you know, where, you know, users can bring, you know, their data, but, or do you prefer that they build their data lake on just one platform? From a cloud perspective, what we see is most customers choose. Like uh, most people are saying, look, uh, they're like, they're choosing AWS, that's their strategic platform, or they're choosing Azure, that's their strategic platform. Um, and that's what, that's what they're building towards. Uh, that said, uh, we, we, we absolutely have, uh, and we see a lot of uh, enterprise organizations, especially larger ones that have an on-premises uh, data lake as well. And so you know, they're using us there as well as their cloud of choice. And the fact that we are in both places uh, with a, a, a semantic layer that is, uh, helps them to actually make that, make that transition because their end users are used to working a certain way. They've already set up the, the virtual data sets the way that they want, and they can in fact uh, export that that semantic layer and help move them to the cloud, but generally or to the cloud of their choice. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, we're not seeing a lot of people, um, you know, trying to do some sort of cross cloud hybrid. They might, you know, put some workloads in one cloud, some in another. Again, with Dremio, so they have a consistent operating experience and environment that uh, that everyone's used to using. Um, uh, and and they might do that to you know kind of mitigate some risk. You know, for example, you know, and be able to um, you know do, you know choose to put a workload here or a workload there, uh, you know, depending on what other uh, services exist, right? Because, you know, it's not like every cloud is created equal. Sometimes they have uh, certain types of things they want to do and there are services that exist in one cloud or the other. So that's one of the key, um, you know, design tenets of Dremio is to make sure that they can run us in whatever cloud that they want in, in whatever way that they want to. And when uh, users, you know, their te data teams uh try to migrate their data to the cloud. What are some of the you know, challenges that you see them facing? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, the, just to be clear, like uh, Dremio doesn't deal with the storage per se, right? So we don't copy data, we don't move data. That's, that's really, frankly, the, the, one of the big benefits. We're, le we're gonna leave the data in place uh, and just query it directly where it lives, you know, right in the data lake. And so uh, clearly a big challenge for organizations, especially if they've got a lot of data on-prem, is getting it to the cloud. But that's something that is independent of Dremio, right? And the good news is there's more and more tools for that, that type of data migration to, uh, to help people to do that. Uh, you know, the, the cloud uh, object store environments like S3 and, and AD, ADLS, uh, they're pretty easy to get data in. So where, where we're really coming along and helping this and facilitating this is the semantic layer that I, that I alluded to earlier. Right, so that semantic layer is that business user-friendly definition of what's my data. You know, what do I call my data? All these different columns. You know, what's the definition of a week? You know, what's the definition of a you know a unit, a product, and and, and so on. Having all of that defined, um, particularly if it's like I, I mentioned, if it's a, an existing on-prem uh, data lake, which which many uh, organizations have, uh, then they can with Dremio they can take that they can actually export that semantic layer af after they've done the data migration, of course. Um, put that uh, same semantic layer into Dremio uh, in the cloud, and they really dramatically speed up their ability to, to, to migrate workloads. So that's uh, that's something that we see uh, quite a few folks taking advantage of us uh, to help them in that in that journey. When when somebody is building, you know, a kind of data lake on the cloud, do they have to take some hits either in terms of performance? I mean, of course, I do know redundancy reliability that actually increases. But what about performance? Yeah, well, so, I mean, performance is absolutely a challenge for queries, you know, uh, and, and frankly, that's, that's a key, one of the key challenges that Dremio was, was created to solve uh, is, the, is the performance challenge of queries directly on that data lake storage. And, uh, you know, the, the, the simple, you know, kind of reason for that is that the cloud object stores, they require, in order, if you want to get performance out of those, you've got to re-architect the software. Any, any of the applications that sit on top of that need to be rebuilt, frankly, um, pretty fundamentally, 
in order to to deliver the performance that uh, that end users demand, you know, out, out of those out of those different systems. You know, most software that's you know that's been built, right? It's built in a very scale up oriented way uh, for on premises environments, and you see a lot of people trying to port that software, put it in the cloud, and it doesn't work very well. So you need to have a massive amount of parallelism in the software, uh, you know, as an example, um, and be very scale out in order to take it you know, to, to deliver performance on top of these these object stores like S3 and ADLS. And so performance has been a huge challenge. In fact, most organizations that have uh, have tried to do you know a, t- a traditional query engine uh, things that exist. There's other server, cloud services that exist. You can get from um, from the cloud vendors themselves to do queries. You know, in the data lake uh, uh, you know, environment or data lake storage environment, they're not fast, and so they tend to get used only on these edge cases for a little bit of, of, of ad hoc work. And the, that lack of performance has driven most people to say, well, uh, since they have an analytic job to be done, uh, there's still the work has to happen. The analytics need to happen. They get forced to copy and move data into an alternate data platform like a data warehouse, cloud data warehouse, um, in order to get ultimately the performance that they need. But of course, that comes with a ton of complexity and cost and and delays. Um, uh, and the, we just factor all that out. So we built ourselves uh, from the ground up to run and optimize for uh, these uh, these data lake environments, in particular cloud data lake storage environments. So you get the performance that you need right on the data lake storage. You don't have to copy and move it and run it anywhere else. So yeah, performance has been a big been a big challenge for people. And if you look at this edition, uh, it also shows you know how Dremio's you know platform is evolving you know depending on the needs of their customers. Uh, can you talk about you know this evolution itself to to kind of you know to to keep up with what customers require depending on wherever they want to work low, like for example analytics. Yeah, so there's a bunch of things that we've been doing kind of along the way, uh, you know, and in, in really things bucket into into two categories: performance and the semantic layer, right? Uh, you know, I mentioned the big challenge of uh, of the semantic layer earlier. I'll, I'll I'll touch on it here a little bit more, but from a performance perspective, but everything started with, uh, you know, our core engine, kind of you know back when we when we started, and we really built that to be. Uh, highly columnar. So we are actually the co-creators of Apache Arrow, which your your uh, listeners and viewers may may be familiar with. So um, an end-to-end columnar in-memory format. And we built our whole engine, you know, around that. And you know, since that that time, we've layered on a bunch of other things too. Massively parallel readers, again, to talk directly to uh, to this cloud object storage, and you know, in a very different way. Um, you know, transparent caching to make sure that we're you know, even though the data is coming out of something like say S3. As, you know, as, as soon as that data, that data is touched, it's stored in high-performance NVMe, uh, you know, storage sitting, you know, in the cloud and you know, transparently for users, so they don't they don't have to worry about that. And we've, you know, then acceleration technology. So you know, even um, uh, you, if you think about most of, of the ad hoc queries, they could be fast enough with Dremio, but there's you know reporting and dashboarding type queries that oftentimes need additional performance. And and so we have a, a, a we we built something that's a similar to a materialized view. But it's all managed transparently inside Dremio. It's not exposed directly. There's nothing to manage. There's no governance challenges and um, you know complexity around all these copies because there's there's no copies with Dremio. So we we built a, a bunch of these uh, acceleration technologies in just right into the platform, just to make to make life easy. So people get this performance and they don't have to worry about well you know you know uh, what they would have had to do. Uh, which was things like cubes and BI extracts and you know aggregation tables and all these other external uh, technologies. So that we've we've kind of been building along the way to keep giving more and more performance uh, for people in the cloud in particular. And then the AWS edition comes along and 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 really just pushes us even further along that journey with things like um, you know the Elastic engines that I that I mentioned that allow you to to really tailor the performance um, per workload. Make sure that there's no under provisioning, which you know then starves performance, for example. But also no over provisioning, which then would would you know increase cost. So that's on the performance side, and then uh, you know on the semantic layer side, you know it, it, it's been a big challenge for people to uh, you know even back on the on-prem world, you know where do you define that that semantic layer? For many folks, it's been well they would have uh, built it into their legacy BI tool, right, and that's where it lives. But then as part of the transition to the cloud. Hey, you know they, they they've got to re-implement that. Where do they do it? They can have you know multiple different uh, front-end visualization tools, uh, very modern ones that we find customers using, like Tableau and Power BI and whatnot. So 
uh, what we've been doing is innovating on the semantic layer side as well. So you know, with Dremio, data engineers can easily go in, provision physical data sets as virtual data sets, you know, do virtual transformations on them, joins various other different things to expose uh, these uh, virtual data sets, not copies. This is really important. We're not, we're not making copies. The data doesn't live in Dremio, right? It's the original copies or the original source is, is just in the cloud in the data lake storage environment. And so we've been evolving that semantic layer so that end user uh, data consumers like BI users or data scientists can just come in and connect to those virtual data sets uh, without having to think about you know, where they are, how they got created, uh, and they can do it without the weeks long worth of, of IT creation that typically is associated with provisioning data sets. So we make that pipeline very, very short uh, for data engineers and ultimately uh, dramatically uh, shrink that time to, uh, to analytics. So we've been investing in that semantic layer uh, along the way just so that it's super easy to use um, and, uh, and, and people just aren't having to wait. I think it's all self-service. That's the way that we talk about it. So we've been building in more and more self-service as we go. What are the, some of the key benefits that users get from uh, the, this AWS edition now versus what they're used to, if you can say, you know, traditional software deployments? So you know, you think, you think about traditional software, it's something you really have got to uh, put a lot of effort into to get it up and running and to take care of it, care and feeding, right? And, and, and I think that's you know, a, a big driver of SaaS adoption. You, know, you think about SaaS, OK. There's still configuration that you very much uh, still have to do, but at least you know you're able to get up and running, uh, you know, pretty quickly. And so, you know, versus uh, what we're doing with the AWS edition versus you know traditional software is providing a SaaS-like experience to the software, but coupling that that the sort of ease of of onboarding experience with the fact that customers can still run all of of Dremio's compute in their own account. And that's actually turning out to be a, a, a really interesting benefit because a lot of organizations, particularly bigger ones, they, they don't want their data living in somebody else's SaaS environment. And so, uh, you know, I think if you think about uh, the, the data warehouse world, if it was on premises, okay, even if you bought a, you know, a, a data warehouse appliance, okay, you, you installed it in your data center and you still owned your data. But in the cloud, with a cloud data warehouse, that data is copied and moved into somebody else's, you know, account and where it's being managed. And we're, and we're seeing enterprises, um, in, in, in some cases, for sure, not all, saying, hey, they want to have complete control of their data. And so we're providing a best of both worlds in this case um, with a, a service-like experience compared to traditional software, but also running in their own account. So some of the other things, though, that, uh, that is different than software is the upgrade. So you think about upgrading and care and feeding. With traditional software, that's a real process, right? Um, and with, uh, with Dremio now, with the release that we're just putting out, upgrading to the next uh, version of Dremio is as simple as stopping an instance of Dremio and starting it again. And whenever that happens, we're going to automatically apply with the user's um, uh, acceptance uh, the latest version of, uh, of our software. So it's as simple as that. That's one of the reasons why we created this, this notion of projects, which are completely self-contained and encapsulated. So when you shut down an instance, it'll close down the project that's associated with it. And when you start it back up again, everything comes up along with, uh, with, the, with the new software. So it's a, it's a very, very uh, simple, streamlined approach that feels very much like SaaS but with the additional benefit of it running in your own account. Jason, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and talking to me today and explaining more in depth about AWS edition of Dreamview. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.